knocked on church doors and asked pastors what is the number one thing they learned from seminary or pastoral training. Here is what they said. What was the most valuable lesson you learned from seminary or pastoral training? Uh, from my seminary training, I've taken, I, I do not have a seminary degree. I was called into the ministry, but I do have seminary training. I've taken a lot of courses. And to be totally honest, I, I found out that I don't need to put my all of my heart in what I learned in seminary courses. Again, I think it goes back to theology that's written by other Christians, and we have to be careful about that theology. It goes back, we need to pray about it. And and discern what God wants us to know. Seminary is great, and we need to have that because of the biblical background that it gives us, but I don't think I would put 100% of my pastoral duties as preaching and witnessing to others or taking care of my congregation. I wouldn't put 100% of that in what I learned in the seminary courses. I think we need to seek God's wisdom in that again and allow Him to guide us. that books and study are only the beginning. Three years of seminary, couple years of pastoral training while I'm on the job, I realize books and study are really the start, but they make a really amazing foundation for building a life of faithfulness. I also learned to lay in scripture in seminary, which I think is such a gift to strengthen the muscles of my biblical imagination, to close my eyes and follow a character in scripture from the beginning of a passage to the end. What are they seeing? What are they smelling? How are they feeling? And I began to see an abundantly clear pattern of a persistent God who never loses faith in us, even when we repeatedly over history have lost faith in God. Scripture is a love story for the lost, and it always ends in waterfalls of mercy and grace. I would say one thing seriously would be theology should lead to doxology. And it's easy for us as Christians where I just want to learn in my head, defend my faith or to answer or to understand the Bible, but to let what you're reading in the Word and what you're understanding lead to a deeper fear of the Lord, a deeper love for Him, a deeper affection for Him, deeper desire for Him. You know, what's the thought that I want to take with me throughout the day that I can use to worship? What does this mean for me practically in the sense of, okay, I read about we're supposed to go and be witnesses to the nation so I need to share my faith today but like more than that how is this drawing me closer to the Lord and it's how is it keeping my heart soft and not hard and, and not drifting and theology leads to doxology The thing that got me the most when teaching this and then learning myself is learning about the aseity of Christ, or the aseity of God, His essence, mm -hmm. His character mm -hmm. that does not change, mm -hmm. that He is immutable. Even now, almost a million lives lost. Question that we get all the time, where is God and all of this is going on? Yeah. My response to that question is, he's where he has always been. He is beholding the good and the evil. Yes. Yes, he's concerned about the lives that are lost, but you got to realize that there is a God that operates and controls this world. God is the ultimate mm -hmm. controller, but that he has allowed the enemy to have delegated authority yeah. to operate. Even in the light of everything that's going on around us, we still have to see God in it, see the positive in it. My thing is that God is always exposing himself to us. And when he exposed it to me, I can't keep it to myself. I have to give it to other people. So this is the thing that I enjoy out of it. Every time I read it, I get something entirely different. Yeah. And so you can't help but to put that out there to other, other yeah. people. One of the best things for me being in classes and things like that is seeing the word manifest. And I think that when we as individuals, a lot of times we can't quote what we don't know. We can't remind God of his word because we don't know the word. We can't speak different things in different situations because we don't know what to speak. We don't understand how powerful our tongue is. We don't understand how powerful and how much authority we have when it comes to speaking to situations, when it comes to speaking to circumstances because we don't have enough of the word in us. And so the word is something that we should study. It enhances our relationship. It enhances our lifestyle as a whole. I think that experiencing God means that you experiencing your best life.
I first think about this, I think <laughs> very practical thing that um, I was taught in a preaching class one day, and that was whatever you do at the end of worship, before you hug your children, before you get a drink of water, before you eat a snack, go and wash your hands because you've just shaken hands <laughs> of everybody in the congregation. Yeah, yeah. And so you've got germs from all those people <laughs> that were in that room. And that was pre-COVID. So, you know, yeah. that was some really good practical <laughs> advice. <laughs> that I received from that time period. But I guess the thing that struck me the most about when I graduated from seminary is, you know, I thought, okay, after three years of seminary, I'm gonna know everything. I'm gonna have mm. everything that I need and I'm gonna be so equipped to go out and, and do ministry. And the truth of the matter was that I, I was just barely scratching the surface. Just like that walk of faith, you know, it is a daily practice. And it, it, I'm always learning, I'm always growing, and that never changes. And, and if it does, then God help me. Because <laughs> I'm in trouble. And we're in trouble. <laughs> so how do you keep learning and growing even though you're not in school or... Mm. trainings. Lots of different ways. By reading, by being in study groups with other pastors and cohorts, by doing continuing education, and by being humble enough to recognize that my church members teach me just as much as I teach them mm. as we walk through faith and life together. Every day, every year, I learn. The older I get, the less I know, thank the Lord, because that just means that I'm still growing. There are two or three things that I think have really helped me on my journey as a pastor over the last 14, 15 years. It's okay to fail, be okay with failure. Some of our greatest fears surround failure, but yet I think some of our greatest growth comes from failure. And so if you don't try, if you don't put yourself out there and experience failure, sometimes you can't break the surface of what is out there for you. And so um, being okay with failure would be one thing that I think would be, it was something that I've learned early on from a number of people. Another thing is you can't take some Somebody somewhere where you haven't been yourself and I think as a pastor it's so important to make sure you are putting yourself in places and experiences where you can truly lead people where you want them to go and so nobody wants to uh, follow somebody who has lost themselves and so whether that's personal devotion time for me growing in God's Word being able to adequately share that whether that's understanding for instance a part of pastoral ministry is uh, hospital ministries like you know I can't lead my deacons to love people when they're sick if I haven't been there and, and been with people and and mourned with people and just all that stuff. So really preparing myself so that I can, you know, lead adequately and lead people where they need to go. And then probably as a preacher, one of the, the best pieces of advice that I've been given is that if it's misty in the pulpit, then it's thick fog in the pews, which means, you know, and that has everything to do with communication, clarity and communication. So if I'm really unsure about where I want to go or how I want to communicate, then I better know that it's going to be completely, people are going to be completely clueless that I'm speaking to. So really kind of refining the process of communication and being intentional about the words that I'm using and saying so that it's crystal clear for people out that are listening. Uh, Wasn't that such good advice? Now, if you guys want to hear what I got back when I asked them what their number one Bible study tip is, click this video here and I'll see you guys in that video.